Hi, I'm Matt Gordon, Senior Applications Engineer at MicRim. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly get MicRim's real-time kernel, MicroCOS 3, up and running on one of the new RX microcontrollers from Renesis Electronics. In order to follow along with the video, you'll need an RX62N RDK board. The features on this board include a 3-axis accelerometer, a built-in J-Link debugger, a variety of different communications interfaces, and, tying it all together, an RX microcontroller. You can order your own board from MicRim's online bookstore, bookstore.micrim.com, where the RDK can be purchased as part of a package that also contains the book, MicroC OS 3 The Real-Time Kernel. This two-part book is packed with helpful information on MicRim's kernel. As you read through the first part of the book, You'll learn how to use semaphores, message queues, and other kernel services. You'll also see how these services are implemented. The second part of the book covers MicroCOS 3 example projects that target the RDK board. Links to the source code and tools needed to build and run these projects are provided in the book. If you have already obtained a book and board and you're ready to begin running the example projects, you should visit www.renesis.com slash RDK RX62N install. After entering this address into your browser, you'll be taken to the downloads page for the RDK board. You should download the installation CD for the board by clicking the link at the top of the page. Although a physical CD is provided with the board, you'll ensure that you receive the latest versions of the tools and example projects if you download the content from the web. The download process will result in a zip file being copied to your PC and at the completion of the process, you should extract the contents of this file. One of the extracted files should be named setup.exe. You can run this file in order to begin installing the tools and example projects. Before anything is actually copied to your PC, you'll be presented with a list of the different components that can be installed. The four components in the list are the Renesis RX tools, the KPIC GNU RX tools, the MicRim example projects, and the drivers for the RDK board's J-Link. You should check the box beside each of these components. Once you've checked the four boxes and clicked the Next button, you'll be guided through the installation process for each component. The Renesis tools will be installed first, followed by the GNU tools. In order to complete the GNU install, you'll need to be registered on the KPIT website. If you have not previously registered with KPIT, then you should click the Register Now button during the installation. You'll need to enter a few pieces of information, such as your name and email address, on the web page that subsequently appears. Shortly after you've completed the fields on this web page, you should receive an email from KPIT containing an activation code that you'll be able to use to finish the installation process. Following the successful installation of all four components, you should set up your hardware. First, you should make sure that the SW5 dip switch located near the center of your RDK board is set for debug mode. An illustration of SW5's debug mode configuration is provided on the board. With SW5 set correctly, you should establish an Ethernet connection between your board and either your entire local area network or just your PC. Ethernet is recommended because MicRim's example projects incorporate the MicroC TCPIP network stack. You'll be able to build and run the projects whether or not you make an Ethernet connection though. Since the RDK board is USB powered and the board's built-in J-Link has a USB interface, you'll need to set up a USB connection between your board and your PC. There are two USB connectors on the board and you should use the one labeled J-Link USB. When you make the connection, Windows should be able to automatically locate the drivers for the J-Link. All of MicRim's example projects for the RDK were developed with Renesis's High Performance Embedded Workshop, or HUE. Once you've finished setting up your board, you should run this IDE. An entry for HUE should have been added to your start menu as part of the installation process. When HUE begins running, you'll be presented with a welcome dialog. You should select Browse to another project workspace in this dialog, and you should then click OK. Next, you should browse to the MicRim folder that was created during the installation process. The default location for this folder is the root directory. From the MicRim folder, you should go to Software, then Eval Boards, Renesis, YRDK RX62N, 
and finally GNU RX. A Hue workspace, also named GNU RX, resides in this last folder. You should open this workspace. The workspace contains five example projects, all of which should be listed in the Workspace Windows Projects tab on the left-hand side of the screen. The project in bold letters, in this case the first example, UCOS-3-EX1, is the active project. You should make the second example active by right-clicking its name, UCOS-3-EX2, and selecting Set as Current Project. If you ask whether the first project's debug session should be saved, you can click No. The Initial Settings dialog that should appear after you've made the second example active indicates that Hue is going to attempt to connect to your RDK board through the built-in J-Link. You should verify that this dialog's MCU group field is set to RX62N group and that the device field is set to R5F562N8. You can then click OK. If you've never before downloaded code to your board, Hue may present you with a Confirm Firmware dialog after you've entered your initial settings. The new dialog simply indicates that the firmware for the board's built-in J-Link needs to be updated. You can click the dialog's Yes button. In the event that your board's J-Link already has the latest firmware, you'll see a Configuration Properties dialog shortly after initial settings disappears. You should make sure that the Input Clock field of Configuration Properties contains the value 12. You should then click the OK button. Once Hue has made its connection, you can build the example project. To do so, you'll need to select Build All from the Build menu. The status of the build will be reported at the bottom of the screen in the Output Windows Build tab. Ultimately, Hue should report zero errors and zero warnings. When the build operation is complete, Hue should ask you whether you would like to download the code to the board. You can click Yes. You can then click the Go button to begin running the code. To make sure that the code is running as expected, you should consult your board. The example code lights the board's LEDs based on readings from the accelerometer. If you pick up the board and change its orientation, the LEDs will change accordingly. The LEDs are not the only means of determining the board's position. This information can also be gathered from McRim's unique visualization tool, MicroC Probe. A MicroC Probe workspace accompanies each of the five example projects for the RDK board. You can open the workspace for the second example by starting MicroC Probe and then clicking the Program Options circle in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. You should then click Open and browse to the folder that contains the Hue workspace you opened earlier. From there, you should go to the folder UCOS-3-EX2 where you'll find the MicroC Probe workspace, UCOS-3-EX2-probe.wsp. When you open the workspace, the symbol browser in the lower left-hand corner of the screen should automatically be populated with file and variable names. If it is not, you must right-click within the symbol browser and then select Add Symbols. You should then browse to the folder that contains the MicroC Probe workspace and continue on to the Debug folder. The ELF file that was created when the example was built, UCOS-3-EX2.X, resides in this folder. You should select the file and click Open. Before using the example workspace to visualize the code running on the RDK board, you'll need to configure MicroC Probe through the Options dialog. You can access this dialog by clicking the Program Options circle in the upper left-hand corner of the screen and then clicking the Options button. On the dialog's communication page, under the Settings header, you should select a communication protocol. If you've made an Ethernet connection to your board, you can select TCPIP. Otherwise, you should select J-Link. What you should do next depends on the communication protocol that you selected. In the case of J-Link, you should proceed to the J-Link page and choose JTAG as the interface mode. For TCPIP, you should go to the TCPIP page and enter your board's IP address in the remote host field. This address should be displayed on the board's graphical LCD. You can use the default port value of 9930. With MicroC Probe properly configured for either TCP IP or J-Link communication, you should click the Start button in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. 
The components in the workspace will then begin updating as shown here. Your board's orientation should be shown on the compass component. MICRIM's example projects for the RDK are ideal for anyone looking to evaluate MicroC Probe or MicroC OS 3. The projects are well documented in the MicroC OS 3 book and, as I hope this video demonstrated, they are easy to use. If you're considering the use of a real-time kernel in your next RX-based project, I recommend ordering an RX book and board from bookstore.micrim.com so that you can take advantage of these examples. They'll help you avoid hassles and quickly get your project off the ground. Thanks for watching.